Hello there, this is Jonathan with DSS Motion bringing you another Mega Box review. This time looking at a brand new Halo Mega Box set from Halo Wars 2. It is the UNSC Kodiak Siege Cannon. This is set number DPW94. It has 868 pieces and retails for around 60 to 70 pounds. This set comprises of the new unit from Halo Wars 2, the Kodiak Cannon. It also has Spartan Alice from Halo Wars 1 and 2, and two Brute Miners. As you can see here, here he is armoured, and one I've pulled the armour off just so you can get a look. We will take a closer look at him later on in the review, but first, let's take a closer look at the vehicle itself. Now, taking a closer look at the vehicle itself, as I mentioned before, it is a vehicle from Halo Wars 2. It seemingly is based off the Fox Cannon concept art from the original Halo Wars game, just with a massive kind of overhaul in terms of where the uh, control section is for the uh, drivers. Uh, the cannon design's been redone. But in spirit, I think you can clearly see that this is based on that original concept art. So it is cool that they've gone back to previous designs that were perhaps cut from the game for whatever reason. They've looked at them, improved them and brought them forward. Uh, this vehicle is apparently a siege cannon vehicle. Um, it's pretty obvious I guess with the massive cannon on the top here. Um, it does have a lot of little fold out support legs that we'll go into in a second. But overall it's just a nice big sturdy bulky design. It is unique, it's very like APC kind of design here. Um, very armoured up front, it's got like, this whole section is just blocks, it's just like, this is where the cockpit start, this is blocks, so it's got a nice armoured front, um, it feels very bulky, it feels very sturdy, um, it's a really fun build as well, and uh, being an eight wheeled vehicle as well, it's pretty unique for a Halo vehicle. Um, we don't get many wheeled vehicles in Halo as it is because of the covenant with the hover technology. And UNSC vehicles are usually either treaded or only have a few wheels like the Warthog. Uh, so this is pretty unique in having eight. Um, it just does, again, makes it stand out a bit more. Um, but we'll, if we take a closer look at the details now as I rotate it around, as you can see for a start straight off, we have this nice little add-on here with some rails for climbing up. So you can have some figures climbing up into this hatch. Uh, this hatch does lift up. Uh, folds back. Uh, you can't fit a figure in here. You can if like you pull the figure apart. You can kind of just like fit the torso in hanging out, uh, but you can't exactly like kind of push him through all the way. As you can see, you can only really get your finger through it. Um, it's not that big at all for a figure at all. You can't really get out. But I'm glad that they've added this little detail. Uh, it was a needed piece for sure. Um, we've had a lot of sets that could have done with like a working hatch on them until now. So I'm glad that they've added that piece just to add to some authenticity for this set. If I rotate it round, uh, you can clearly see here that this is like the window section here for the driver to look out of. There is no clear glass effect piece in there. It is kind of, you can like just shove things through. Um, again, I don't know if that's accurate to the game or if that's just that they didn't want to design a unique piece because it is such a small gap. It would have had to be a u unique piece and maybe they didn't want to do that. So I'll let it slide here. Uh, just rotating it round again. Uh, again, you can see the window a bit better. Uh, on this side, you have a little railing again. I don't really know what this is for, um, as it doesn't really suggest that people can climb up because the ladder's on the other side. Um, but it's just another nice detailed piece. If I rotate it round, it's pretty symmetrical on both sides. Uh, the only exception here being that on this side, instead of the railing, um, if I just lift this up, you can see that this hatch comes off and there's a little folding kind of window. Um, I guess I don't know what that's for in particular, but you could have a marine shooting out of that if you wanted It just just fold up and it folds down when you want it. It's just a nice little detail again um, Really like it. No complaints. If you rotate it round to the back You get this really highly detailed kind of back section. These are support legs that fold down If I just show you here, they uh, just pop down like that and on this side as well and then this middle bit folds down. As you can see, there's some nice little painted detail for the light section. Um, there's just a, all this nice silver detailing on the cannon. It looks like where like, the uh, shell would kind of slide out once it fires, being a massive artillery cannon. So I'm glad that they've added these kind of details, because it just really does make this a nice set. Now, as I just showed you, the uh, back section does fold down there. As you can see, it's just hanging out at the back here. Uh, but also, there's extra bits to add to the artillery mode as well. First of all, if you lift this cannon a little bit, you can just unclip these. They do kind of just peg onto the side. Uh, these are on each side, and they just clip down and drop down. That extra support stands, and then you can position the cannon how you want. You can get a good angle. As you can see, it's pretty high up there. Or you can just lower it down as well, because 
you, so you can angle where it's exactly firing. Uh, it's a really nice turret. Um, there is an addendum sheet currently in the instructions being such a new set. I guess there was a few little design tweaks that still need to be made. Um, and if you do follow that addendum, I found that this turret became incredibly delicate here. Like this kept just falling off under its own weight. So I went back and built this based on the original instruction design and it is now really sturdy. Um, it can't come off because there's a nice big peg running through the whole build. Um, I don't really know why they changed it, um, but I feel that this one is much better in terms of design. Um, so if you do have issues following the addendum sheet that's in this set, um, maybe try going back to the original design as I feel it does work a lot better. Just taking a closer look at the front section here, if I just lift off this front hatch here, you can see it's got a nice printed UNSC logo on the top of it. Uh, again, printed detail, not a sticker. And it is the correct UNSC logo from this time period of Halo Wars. Um, I am glad that they've included that. I did feel a lot of the sets previously um, had inaccurate logos. For example, the Halo Wars Elephant had the Halo 4 and Onwards era logo, as did the Mongoose with Emil. Um, they all should have been this logo in particular. So I'm glad that they've paid close attention here to get the correct logo. If I just bring this forward a little bit, I've just put these two Halo Wars Marines in. Uh, these aren't included with the set. But it just gives you an idea that you can fit two characters in here. Um, if I just lift it up ever so slightly, there are little, little control rods that they can get hold of. Uh, but past that, it's just a basic kind of control room. Two seats for two figures. Um, and I, it does the job great. No complaints there at all. I will however highlight that this is the only peg here that the roof clips on with. Um, now the problem is, is I feel that when you push down on it, it's kind of, um, I don't know, bending the piece or something because it won't clip on. So I often have to take out this peg in particular, plug it onto the um, roof and then sit the whole piece in as one. Um, I, it's a bit of a design for. I don't know if that's just a one-off in terms of my set, um, but it's something to watch out for for sure if you've got issues with it. So as you can see here, this is the middle section. It's got some nice red fuel tanks on it as well on both sides. Uh, this lid does lift off and you can use it for storage, put little guns in there or whatever you want. Um, it's a nice little uh, feature and it's cool that it's pretty concealed into the design itself. It does look like it's part of the design, um, not just like an obscure box just sticking out there protruding. So it's cool that they've built this in. I don't know if it's like that in game, but it is a nice little feature and I definitely welcome it to this set. But you can also lift it off even more, revealing some sort of engine or artillery loading mechanism. Um, I think it's more of an engine. Um, in Halo, uh, human vehicles use uh, hydrogen engines. Uh, this definitely does look something like that in terms of its power plant. Um, it's just a nice little feature. Megabox are doing this more and more. If I just rotate it around, you can see it's got some nice details in there. Um, I'm glad that they are adding extra details like this. It is feeling more like a kind of collector's line now. Um, it has been the Halo Collector's series for a while. So I'm glad that we're finally seeing some sort of details that make it worthy of the name. Um, we see this in the Warthog as well. You can see an engine in that. And it's, it's just a cool feature. Um, and it just helps kind of sell the authenticity of these vehicles. Taking a closer look at the figures, and we'll start with my favourite from this set. This is Spartan Alice from Halo Wars 1 and 2. Now, this is a new figure in terms of some new parts. Um, it also is the first time we've seen this character named in the line. Uh, this is uh, from Red Team in Halo Wars 1 and 2. She's a member of that, and she's on the Spirit of Fire as far as we know up until now. Of course, we haven't seen Halo Wars 2 yet, so we don't know what's going to happen to her and the rest of the team. Um, but the figure itself, it's got some really, really nice new parts. You've got a great new sculpted helmet. This isn't carried over from the um, original figure of the Mark IV Spartan. Um, it's nice new sculpt. You also get some nice new sculpted shoulder pads that are faithful to the armour as well. You get some great printed detail as well with the visor, the little 130 logo on her chest. I know it's a bit hard to see, but it's just because it's so small. Oh, just pick her up. Uh, you also get the nice Jolly Roger logo there as well with the uh, silver paint and the black kind of uh, burn mark underneath it. Really nice effect. I really do like it. And ultimately, it's a great figure. Now, being a woman, um, you might expect that this would have used the female Spartan body that they've just created. Um, it doesn't. It uses the male one. I know some people have already started complaining over this, but if you look at the Halo Wars Spartans, they actually do not have... Um, feminine bodies for the females or masculine bodies 
uh, because the armor is so bulky at this time period for Halo Wars and, and the designers have highlighted how that they wanted it bulky and whatnot to highlight how technology evolved through Halo, um, they aren't very form fitting so you can't really tell who's underneath it. So people have complained but I feel it is more faithful to the actual game appearance and uh, more accurate so you won't get any complaints from me, I do absolutely like it. This figure does however have a few little issues that I'm not happy with. Uh, while you get new sculpted legs, shoulders and head, uh, the chest armour is just completely inaccurate. Uh, they've literally just reused the Mark IV Master Chief um, chest piece. Now, again, it is a Mark IV armour like uh, Alice was, so points for that. However, the Master Chief version of this was like a customised version, uh, which is based on the stylized Japanese anime design. Uh, this one should be a lot more bulky. It shouldn't have such raised kind of shoulder sections on the sides. Um, if you just fire up the game, you can clearly see that this is quite off in terms of detailing. Um, I don't really know why this has happened. I guess it's just to try and save some money uh, on sculpt detailing. I mean, the figure still works and it still looks really, really nice. I just feel that they should have probably paid a bit more attention, especially when you add up the fact that this cod piece here, um, that should be green and it's just black. No idea again why. And these arm pieces here are clearly the Halo Reach ones. Um, it even has Carter's little uh, tack pad still sculpted onto that side as well. Um, it really odd as well because the Master Chief Mark IV has more closer to um, accurate arms that they could have used here. So it is really odd that they've kind of mixed and matched between Halo Reach, Halo F um, Wars and uh, the Forward Unto Dawn designs. Um, I don't know why, but like I said, it still somehow makes a great figure. So if you're not massively focused on accuracy and you just want a representation of Alice, this is a great figure. I am happy with it. I'm just glad to see some more named characters. Um, but if they were to re-release it with perhaps more accurate detailing, I would definitely not say no to that either. For accessories, she comes with a Halo Reach shotgun. Again, a bit of an odd uh, piece. They should have just used the Halo 3 model. That's close to the Halo Wars design. Um, so, a little bit of a downside there for the weapon. However, it's just a nice weapon to have. So, I'm not going to complain too much. Especially when the highlight from this is, of course, the new battle rifle. Uh, this is the Halo 5 design. Um, so, again, it is a bit out of place here. But I'm just glad that we finally got an updated battle rifle. The Halo 3 one, it was getting really old sculpt wise and it was just inaccurate to have with anything past the Halo 3 figure. So all the Halo 4 figures, we've had all the Spartans over the past two years, um, they've just been going with the wrong battle rifle. And Mega finally answered our calls, um, we've been kind of requesting this as fans quite a lot on their pages and whatnot. They finally uh, listened to us and they've given us a new battle rifle. Uh, it's a fantastic sculpt, uh, all the details are in there from Halo 5, including the little recon site on the top. Um, you get some nice little detailing with the uh, rail, you can see the textured rail running along the top. The barrel detailing is nice, it's also more compact versus a previous battle rifle. Fits in figures hands a lot better I've found. It's just a great accessory, um, definitely going to need a few of these battle rifles. I hope these come in a lot of blind bags in the future, a lot of other sets because I would like to update a lot of my old figures. It's a fantastic battle rifle, um, a lot better than the Halo 3 one that we had um, from the start of the line pretty much. So I'm glad that they finally updated it. Taking a closer look at the enemies from this set. It is, of course, two new Brute Miners. Uh, these are brand new sculpts for this year. Uh, Megablox have finally updated the uh, Brutes, as you can see, with the new articulation and armor system. Uh, they have been highly requested, so it's absolutely fantastic that we are seeing these. Um, and they are really well done. I know people have had a lot of complaints over scale. Um, they are just uh, ever so slightly... Um, if I just kind of move him in there, so uh, they're pretty much the same size as Spartans. Uh, they should be taller, um, but obviously there's a cost issue perhaps because they're so bulky. Because uh, this torso, while it may not look it, is absolutely bulky. It's really thick and chunky, as are the legs as well. Um, so they've definitely had to put a lot more money into plastic production here. 
which has probably raised the cost of these figures. Um, so I am glad that they are including them and they've done the best that they can without making them exceedingly expensive and rare. Uh, the way that they've done them means that we can army build them and we'll see them in blind bags, no problem. Um, had they have invested more scale to them, would have meant more plastic, would have raised the cost, which would have meant they would have been a very rare figure um, to see, if anything. So it is a nice um, new improvement over the Brutes and much better over the previous Halo Wars designs we've had. Uh, every previous Brute um, has been based on a Halo Wars style body. Even the Halo 2 ones from the Tartarus pack last year, they still used Halo Wars Brute legs. And they just, they were really chunky, the articulation was limited, and it, it just was a nice sculpt that much at all. Uh, you couldn't even tell really that there was fur on them. Um, they were really small, I mean they were even smaller than these guys, they were below Spartan height. Um, so they have made a significant improvement and I am I am really happy with it, definitely no complaints. Now as you can see these are both exactly the same figure, I have just took the armour off one of them so you can see underneath. They do have a nice uh, sculpted undersuit, uh, they do have like some sculpted kind of strapping on their arms, they're not just reuse elite arms, they have some sort of fur effect as well. Um, really, really great pieces, uh, and you even have an improvement as well in that they've used the uh, pinhole, uh, that's how you attach the helmet, like the Elite, however it's been made significantly smaller than the Elite, um, so it's not as noticeable, because um, like, if you take a, a helmet off an Elite, it looks pretty bad and noticeable, because it has a massive hole, they've made an improvement here by making it so small. Now unfortunately, this he head sculpt here, um, it is actually a fantastic head sculpt, but because there is no paint detailing, no black wash, all the detail is lost and it just looks like a lump as you can see there. You couldn't really tell that that's a brute face. And in actuality, when you get really, really up close, you can see so much detail in there. There's like wrinkles in there, there's the teeth poking out of the mouth. It's just such a shame that they've put so much effort in and then just wasted it really. Um, I would definitely recommend that Mega Bloks do kind of paint these up at some point. Uh, they probably won't, they don't really seem to paint flesh tones, they do just kind of leave them as they are, um, which is a shame because we're not going to see the true potential of this figure unless you customise it yourself. Um, so yeah, an improvement there could be made, but ultimately it's still a nice head sculpt that it just needs enhancing a bit more to show how awesome it is. So these Brute's armors are based on the Halo 3 Brute Miner. It is, however, um, if you leave all the armor on, more representative of the Brute Major rank. The Brute Miner has the um, shoulders and the thigh armor removed because they, uh, like, they've like they not earned the armor yet. Um, this, however, could be different in Halo Wars 2, which this set's from. Um, or it could just be an oversight from Mega. Either way, you either get some bonus armor or you get highly accurate figures to Halo Wars 2. We can't just say... Um, either way right now because we've not even seen any footage minus one trailer. Uh, these could be highly accurate. So for now I will leave judgment out there before we get to see the game. So I'm sure some of you have already noticed that this is a new Brute Shot sculpt. It does have some nice new detailing on it and it's updated in order to be used uh, two-handed by the new Articulation Brutes. Uh, you have some nice sculpted wear and tear on the blade. Um, at the back you can see little scratches in it. You do now have the accurate curved uh, barrel at the front here. You have the uh, accurate grip at the front here as well. It's just a fantastic weapon. It makes the original Brute Shot look really, really bad. It's a lot thinner as well. The other one was way too bulky. Um, really do like it. And I hope that we see this on pretty much every Brute release that we have in the coming few years. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic sculpt. Um, they are really doing a good job this year on new sculpts. The battle rifle's great. This weapon's great. I do hope that we see some new uh, ones. We have seen that there is an assault rifle coming that's upgraded to the Halo 5 design. I can't wait to get my hands on that. So I'm glad that Mega are finally updating the weapons. We could just do with like a plasma rifle upgraded as well. And then we're pretty much sorted in terms of accuracy with new weapons. So overall you get a fantastic new vehicle here, um, being from Halo Wars 2 and it's not released yet of course, uh, we can't highlight if this is accurate to the game or not, we'd have to assume that this is though uh, pretty close at least as it is pretty similar to the prototype, so 343 didn't go and tell Megablox to redesign it, they're happy with how it looks, so assumedly this is pretty close to how it looks in game and I am pretty happy with it, it is a nice big truck, it's pretty unique, we don't really get 8 
eight-wheeled kind of vehicles in Halo. So it does stand out and make itself a lot more unique than previous vehicles we've had. The figure loadout is great. Yes, I have a few issues with the figures. There could be a few improvements, but ultimately, I am kind of just glad that we're finally getting these figures. At one point, I was kind of thinking that we might never see upgraded brutes or whatnot. Um, they have been kind of neglected in the line, so I'm glad to see them. And of course, it's great to start seeing Red Team, another named group of characters being released, even if they do have a few little inaccuracies. So that's it for this review. I hope you've enjoyed it. We will be reviewing more Halo and Call of Duty Mega Box sets in the coming weeks. So don't forget to like, favourite and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye!